I am on a quest to make the ultimate polymer clay cutter. I started out by using my filament 3D printer, which is how a lot of DIYers and Etsyers make theirs. Uh, and it works, but no matter how dialed in your settings are on a filament printer, you're always gonna get what I call a ziggurat effect where there is stepped layers and the thickness of that tippity top layer is going to uh, dictate how much clay it's going to squish. And when you squish clay, instead of actually cutting the clay, you're going to have to sand the edges of your polymer clay. Now, I'm not saying that all filament printed clay cutters are generally bad quality. There are fancy printers that can consistently print thicknesses down to 0.1 millimeters, like the Bamboo X1, but I don't have the money for one of those. And resin printers can print even smaller layers than that. Uh, more consistently. So my natural inclination was to try this on my resin 3D printer. I first used my Anycubic Mono 4K printer, which is a really great printer. And to be fair, I was pretty new at the time, so I didn't have the settings dialed in how I should have. The result, subpar cutters with extremely brittle edges. After doing a lot of research on resin print settings, I decided the best thing I could do would be to uh, do my own testing on my own machine because there are just too many variables that can alter how a resin 3D print comes out. Since that video, we've gotten two more resin 3D printers. They're a lower resolution, but so far they are honestly more reliable than my Anycubic. But we're gonna try to test them and see if the resolution matters for this application. And stick around because I'm going to have a really great offer for y'all who want to test out these resin clay cutters for yourself on our Etsy page. I am basically gonna sell these cutters at cost just to make them and ship them because I want y'all to test them out and give me feedback on how they performed for you and if there's anything that I can do to improve them before I launch a full catalog of cutters on Etsy. So before we deep dive into printer settings, I wanna talk about cutter shape or the profile of the cutter. The angle of the cutter really matters a lot. If the angle is too acute, you're gonna get more print fails, the cutters won't be as strong as they need to be, and inversely, if the edge is not sharp enough, it'll squish the clay rather than cut it. So it's important to find the right balance between the two. I ran a few tests on this just to find the optimal angle, and I found that 60 degrees is roughly the optimal balance between the two. The second important thing to think of is ergonomics. If you're cutting a million of the same shape for earrings, you're gonna want something that is easy to hold and doesn't hurt over time. Uh, rounded edges and a large grabbable surface really help to make for a more ergonomic experience. So for me, resin printer settings are a lot more involved compared to standard filament printer settings. And for me, it's much easier to diagnose print issues with filament printers. Tell me if you think differently, but resin settings seem to be much more interlaced and codependent on each other. For example, you might find the perfect UV exposure time when the layer heights are at 0.05 millimeters. But when you change the layer heights to 0.06 millimeters, you'll find that the exposure time probably needs to be adjusted to accommodate the layer height change. This is in stark contrast to a filament 3D printer where you can find a temperature for PLA plastic that works for you and you usually don't have to change that temperature if you change other settings. With this in mind, it can be difficult to fine tune your resin printer settings. My approach will be to isolate sp a specific setting, find what works, and then test that specific setting along others with other settings to make sure that it is fully optimized. There are a lot of resin printing variables, but in this video, we're going to focus on the main ones and I'll touch on a few of the minor ones as well. Your printer, the resin you use, your exposure settings, the layer height, and even the ambient temperature and moisture content can make or break your prints. Starting with your printer, mainly the resolution. I'm using all LCD resin printers and I really haven't played around with DLP or SLA, so I really can't speak to those, but my Anycubic is a 4K resolution and my other two printers the Nova 3D Elfin 3 and my Vox Labs Proxima are both 2K resolution. Resolution controls how jagged a print is in the X and Y directions, where the layer height controls how jagged a print is in the Z direction. For this application, I'm not sure how important the resolution will be with the exception of the very tiny last layer at the top of the cutter. That may benefit from a more detailed printer that is yet to be seen, but first we really have to dial in the rest of our settings to make sure that our prints are not failing for other reasons. The type of resin you use can also have a great deal of impact on your prints. And here is an open call for you to put your favorite high strength resin 
uh, down below in the comments so that I can test it. Right now I'm using Shine Sing's 3D print uh, tough resin and it may also be a little bit expired, but I haven't found the first issue with it, so that's what we're going to go with. But if you know a resin that does not cost an arm and a leg, but still has significant strength to it, let me know. Exposure. UV exposure encompasses a number of settings in the resin printer world. There's an exposure for the first few layers so that it gets good adherence to the print bed. There's exposure for the rest of the print, and then there's also transitional layers between the first layers and the rest of the layers. There's also rest time after it's exposed and a whole bunch of other stuff. You really can get yourself in a rabbit hole here with this one. I'm gonna focus on the main exposure and I've been told that the bottom layer exposure should be anywhere from eight to 12 times your main exposure. So if my main exposure is 2.0 seconds, I'll default my bottom exposure to 20 seconds or 10x. And here's a good time as any to tell you about the resin slicer program that I use. If you've done any 3D printing with resin at all, you've probably either heard of it or have used it but it really is the best free one that I've been able to find. Chichibox has a lot of really useful settings and in my opinion has a much better user interface than other programs like Lychee. The free version also doesn't have ads when you export, which is also very nice. Chichibox has a paid software that has more amazing tools as well. For Honestly, for just a hobbyist and a cheapskate like me, you're probably fine with the free version, but there are a bunch of things that I do really wish were available that are available in the pro version, like splitting your models, Boolean operations, auto layout, and a whole lot more. I'll put a link below if you are interested in upgrading to the pro version. They have a bunch of promos happening right now, so jump on it. I'm gonna run some tests on my Vox Labs and any cubic printers to see if I can notice a difference in the resolution. And I'm gonna start off with a little test print that I found on Thingiverse. I'll link it below. Starting on the Vox Labs, I'll run the exposures from 1.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds. And that's at a 0.05 millimeter height. First step is to export 10 different versions of the file with 10 slightly different exposure settings. It's a little bit tedious and I really wish there was a way to do batch exporting. It's also always a struggle the first time linking a new 3D printer to any type of slicer software because you sometimes have to guess and check to see what file type your 3D printer accepts. Chichibox uh, does a really good job at that and exports to a wide variety of formats, but even so, I'm struggling to connect my Nova 3D, so I guess I won't be using that printer for this demo. But I think it's very similar to the Vox Labs printer that I have, so I don't think there's gonna be a significant difference in quality between the two. So now it's just a matter of telling the printer to do its thing. I really like this Vox Labs printer so far. I'm worried about the resolution being a little bit lower than my Anycubic, but we'll see how it does. One really annoying thing that I haven't experienced on my Anycubic is that the resin likes to splash all over the orange lid when it's on. And that's really annoying and you can just clean it up with uh, isopropyl alcohol, but it's still a pain in the butt. So we've got our first line of testing, starting with the least exposed and working our way to the most exposed. There's definitely some deformation, missing parts, as well as over and under exposed prints here. And I actually did not end up printing the 2.3 through 2.5 seconds because it was very clear that the 2.2 second print was way overexposed and was becoming difficult to remove from the printer bed. The underexposed one has a lot of deformation and many of the tiny little sticks in the middle are missing along with a few of the cylinders as well. The overexposed one is more of a few thing than anything it was really tough to get it off the printer bed and it definitely feels more brittle than the other prints this one is the most intact has the most tiny little sticks and the best overall quality now it's time to switch to the anycubic this time I'll be doing exposures only from 1.7 to 2.1 since we kind of narrowed it in a little bit you may notice that all these anycubic prints are warped that's not the printer I just left them in the heat without curing for too long but they turned out nicely other than that 2.1 second exposure got so stuck that I had to break it off the bed completely and again, I think the 1.9 seconds is the best print we have here. One quick note here, I like the Vox Labs printer bed a lot better because there's the slightest texture on it that makes removing prints a whole lot easier than on my Anycubic. So to compare both 1.9 second exposures together, I'm seeing a lot of clarity on the Anycubic with its 4K resolution. Here, here, and here are all much cleaner. Neither printer was able to make the bridge here. I probably need a printer with a higher resolution for that. So after testing, it looks like the printers both work really well at a 1.9 second uh, resolution, which means that the 
top layers are going to be at a 19 second resolution. We will still go back and double check these settings once we've got our other settings dialed in. So let's talk layer height. You can clearly tell that the 0.01 millimeter print is much smoother than the other one. That doesn't necessarily mean it's stronger than the other one though. And the other issue with printing at a 0.01 millimeter height is that it takes forever to print since the layers are literally a tenth of the height of the other print. Since I'm going to be making these as a sellable product, I need to maximize its strength while keeping in mind that a two hour print for something this small is simply not economically viable. So all my test prints are now finished. It's time to test their cutting abilities and then stress test them a little bit. I won't show you all of them for the sake of time, but here's the 0.1 millimeter as it came off the bed. The larger the layer height, the more broken they ended up being. So we're not even going to be able to test the 0.1, 0.09, and 0.08 millimeter since they are all clearly not what we're looking for. The rest of these though are all contenders except for maybe the 0.01 that took way too long to print, but we'll still test it anyways. In all honesty, this is my first time rolling out polymer clay. Eva is usually the go-to for polymer clay, but I figured no time like the present to figure it out myself. That being said, I am clearly not an expert when it comes to rolling or baking, but I know enough to be dangerous for sure. For example, this was way too much cornstarch. The starch helps to keep the clay from sticking to the work surface. I had to wipe away a bunch of the starch to keep the clay from moving around on my material. So now I'm just punching some holes and labeling them with my metal punches. I didn't have numbers, so A stands for 0.01 millimeters, B stands for 0.02, and so on. So far they are cutting out perfectly and I am really loving these. They are not leaving any sort of edge that I otherwise would have to sand off and they are giving me a super clean cut. Just for fun, I'm gonna try this filament printed cutter that I made a while back to compare. And there really is a huge difference in these resin printed ones. They are smoothly cutting instead of squishing like this other cutter. And you can definitely see some edge to the filament printed cutter that I would have to sand off otherwise. Here's a close up view of all of them, ignore the extra cornstarch, and you can start to see some edge when it hits 0.05 millimeter so my hope is that we can stay below that 0.05 mark as we move up the quality goes down which is makes perfect sense since the blades are that much thicker at the tip so you can see a clear winner here this is the 0.01 millimeter versus the 0.10 millimeter but again as i mentioned we can't go with the 0.01 because of the time constraint so now it's time to destroy them a little bit and see if we can get them to break starting with the weakest one 0.1 millimeters this one just broke right in my hands as i started to bend it this 0.01 millimeter was actually pretty strong, although it did break a little bit. Um, and it did snap when I put a lot of pressure on it. Those were the only two that actually shattered though. I, if I wanted to, I probably could have with the 0.09 and 0.08 and maybe the 0.07, but I didn't even bother with those. I knew they weren't gonna work anyways. I won't show you all these and instead I'll just jump to the winner. 0.04 millimeters was the most resilient to all of my nonsense and it would be definitely stack up to any filament printed cutter as far as strength goes. I was really worried that I wasn't able to make a resin print that was this tough but this one is really holding up well. And while we're at it, let's see if I can destroy this filament printed cutter too. It's very strong in the X, Y direction but the tip is definitely a weak point and I think can be broken. And sure enough, the top edge really comes apart easily when you're trying. Obviously, most cutters won't be put through these rigorous scenarios, but I just want to make sure that the product that I'm selling can hold its own when it comes to sturdiness. Now that we have our optimal layer height, we can move on to designing some actual cutters. I use SketchUp Online for this. It has some really useful tools and is completely free. I've made these a little bit sturdier and gave them some nice ergonomic edges too. And I'm able to print all three shapes at the same time, which is really nice. I'm going to start with my AnyCubic, but also run a few tests on my Vox Labs while I'm at it too. These prints are taking roughly an hour, and after each print I adjust the setting slightly to improve this on both machines. I mentioned earlier that the humidity and temperature is a key factor in getting your prints to work, and it really is. Humid weather will cause prints to not stick to the bed as well, and hotter temperatures actually help to reduce print fails, which is really good if you live in Texas like I do. So here are all my tests so far. Each one has a slightly different setting, and I played around with a lot of combinations just to get the right balance of setting. Common issues include breaking at the tip, this weird white residue, and lifting from my bottom exposure being too low. They all tested pretty well. This first group was my worst print and this second group was my best print. The bad one would really need some minimal sanding and the nice one doesn't hardly need anything at all. 
And of course I've got to see if I can break these bad boys. This one is my best print and it really held up to a lot of stuff. The second one is overexposed and is quite brittle as you can tell, so it's breaking very easily. So definitely I'm going to go with the first one instead of the second one. While I'm breaking this bad print here, here are the settings that I used on my good prints. You may notice that I switched to a 0.03 millimeter height instead of 0.04. This model was a little bit more finicky and dropping down a step in layer height really helped to resolve a lot of issues even if it makes for a longer print. And just look at that beautiful cut, there is nothing more satisfying than a beautiful polymer clay cutter. <laughs> While there still are some settings to play around with, I think we're at a really good point here with these settings that I have, and I'm really excited about how uh, firm, uh, how sturdy they are, how uh, non-fragile they are. That's That was my biggest worry, was that these things were just gonna break and crack, um, but I've gotten them to a point where they're not overexposed and not cracking like the previous ones were. Um, so I'm really happy about that and I think it can only get better from here I'm gonna put these on our Etsy store for dirt cheap because I really believe in this product And I think that you will too once you use it So the file that I put together with the three shapes the rainbow the square the circle I will put a link to that in our Etsy store and and we're really just gonna charge the cost to make the thing and the shipping costs so it's as low as we can make it and since you watch this video there is a discount link down below that you can use to get them for even cheaper so head to our etsy and check them out thanks for watching and i hope you learned something about resin printing and or polymer clay cutting if you have any questions let us know in the comments and follow us subscribe comment and all that fun stuff so see you next time